Hi, everybody, and listen, we have, we're very fortunate that we have with us uh, the authors, authors, co-author, Myrna Manslaughter and Mayhem on the South Coast, uh, Volume 2, 1970 to 1999, and of course our guest is the, the famous, the, the combination of the famous uh, <laughs> writers such as John P. Cumming, Jr., uh, and Stephanie, Dr. Stephanie Corley. Now, this is some of the books that he's, that you have collaborated together on all yes, of them. Right. Is, is that the word, collaborated together on the way? And, uh, <coughs> and they're doing well. They're doing well in the marketplace, I hope. They um, are. Thank yeah, you. Good. Thanks to you. Uh, well, no, thanks to me. Oh. Uh, he, I like to do it in the library. You're going to meet with the librarian after this. Anyway. Plan to, yes. All right. I'm going to tell you, but first of all, again, John P. Cummins is a lifelong resident of the greater Fort River area. His uh, roots go deep, as his grandfather was a Fort River mayor, and his father a practicing attorney in the area for uh, for over what over fifty, over 50, 50 years. years. Yep. And uh, you did a lot of things with the chambers and the rating. You wrote a book about the economics. Or what was the name of that one? From Little Acorns Grow Giant Oaks. Giant Oaks. Well, I, mean, I wanted to see if you know, remember the. I, 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 I remember that half of it. Yes. Uh, that that course, never became the, public. Of course, the. Uh, I didn't know it was a, the, flight, the Hurricane Carol, 1954. That's the last Between flight. the crop before it was best and brightest, and most recently, Lobster Tales, The History of Moby Dick, and Back Eddie Restaurant. He's interested. In Westport, Massachusetts, he also produced a Last Fling DVD with actual hurricane footage and survivors' interviews. All books and the DVDs are available through the publisher's website, Hillside Media Network. The DVD is very, very interesting to watch. What's that? The DVD on the hurricane is really good. I was trying to get a weatherman at one time out of, uh, um, I should have contacted you, uh, and it was, when he goes away, he wasn't around for certain times of the year and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. He's a Westport guy, Westport guy, a Dartmouth guy. He was a, he was a weatherman and a writer. I don't know if you read that. I don't have the name. No, I, I can't think of who you're talking about. Uh, you're not talking about the postman. I don't think so. I don't think so. He, had a, he, he still has a weather station uh, on Cherry and Webb Lane. Well, well, maybe, I don't think so. He reports the weather, but he's not a weather man, per oh, se. Okay, okay. Well, I think so, this one had some substance to be able to talk about in you know, the yeah. show or the film or whatever. And we don't want to, you know, we would save the best for last, John, and let's tell you that. Dr. Stephanie Corey. That's <laughs> you. right. You're that's just the, kind. That's, that's the way you should. She, she read, she's kind. written about the uh, several author of several books about the Four River history, uh, historic fires of Four River, yeah. images of America, Four River revisited. Lizzie Borden. You spent a lot of time on that, didn't you? Huh? Yes. Yes. And um, and, the, and she uh, and the science, she made a work on Arthur Miller's scholarship, Arthur Miller's life and literature, mm -hmm. and. She's a co-author and with John Cumming in Murder, Manslaughter, and Mayhem in the South Coast, Volume One. One and two. One and two. Welcome to the Somerset Public Library, and um, thank you. Welcome, uh, welcome to get to have you come here and so on. I noticed that in the book itself, you uh, well, you gave as you did in the last book, you gave credit to the law enforcement people. Uh, Ted Harrington uh, is in yes. here, the judge. Ted Harrington, uh, a lot of other people that we know. Collectively, we know, yeah. know of, you know, uh, and it's it's quite a compliment. The thing that I would read the dedication piece that you guys wrote up to the police and fire, because where would you get all these records to go and all these? They have to be. They were very much a participant in helping you to get that information. Well, in, in some cases, the chief in Fall River was. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, Who was it then? It wasn't the ch current chief. It Racine. Was Race, chief Racine. Okay. Very nice man. Yes, he is. Very nice guy. And uh, he helped me in Fall River. And uh, some of the outlying chiefs did too. But I did most of my research, or I, we did most of our research through uh, libraries, newspaper articles. Uh, so we went to the newspapers. Or but the online resources for the, this book, more, more recent murders. Yeah. There's a lot of information, like parole records are online, right. appeals, the mm -hmm. transcripts of the appeals are online on some of these cases. So you can get better details of the crimes instead of just relying on newspaper articles, which often get it slightly wrong. 
or a boat. or like, never you know, mention the name of the victim. <laughs> well, that, sometimes they never even mention the name of the victim. Well, exactly. And the other thing is they don't carry it through to the extent that exactly. wets the appetite of the reader. Right. Right. Uh, you know, it just stops. It stops. There. Right. It know. stops at a preliminary hearing. Everything is a cold happened. case. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, in 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 your book, John. Uh, some of the when you look at some of the stories that you tell or re, re, recant, you see where um, you know, some of these guys have had or gals have had prior record. Yep, a, a lot of them, uh, yeah. and a lot of them after they get punished come back and do do the similar, same thing, similar crimes again. Right. The the Patello girl. Yes. It's a student of mine. I really. Taught, but I taught in. Uh, Gail Patello. Yeah, I oh. taught in. Um, She's a piece of work, I might tell you. She she had her problems. She absolutely she had, had her problems. problems. Yeah. Yeah. But she didn't deserve to die and get put under a barbecue pit no. by Tavares, that's for yeah. sure. Tavares was a real interesting character. That that has a lot of legs, all that, that cult, doesn't it? Yeah. It keeps coming back on the whole thing. Well, know? Tavares is actually a serial killer. He's one of the beginnings of the serial killer, and he's actually a possible suspect in the uh, prostitute murders, the New Bedford yeah, roadside right. murders, because he he's one of those bad guys who sort of wants to take credit for the stuff he did, and after years and years and years, he'll come out and say, well, you know, I had something to do with that. And when the police yeah. investigate it, they yeah. find out he did. It's not him boasting about things he didn't do. So he's led on lately that he had something to do with those murders, so they Kind well, of they were desperate, you know, actually you, with your cult murders going in the Freetown Forest, you, that comes into also with the, uh, the some of the things that Shallow Graves put, put out. Yes. The other thing is, um, um, who was it? Ponce was the lawyer, and that's a story behind the story there. Yes. That was Pena frustrated with the yep. position. Uh, frustrated with Lowney running against them. Yep. Right? That, there were political that, issues yeah, going it on. It was a very yeah. big political issue. And uh, the governor at that time at the caucus had to intercede because the head, the head of it, who, from the state police, who was an assignment to the, the, the DA's office in the Bedford, um, they wanted to walk out. They walked out because of an election. Well, a Alan Sylvia, who was the lead detective on right. the cult murders in Fall River, um, Freetown, though. He comes from the Freetown. Sylvia is now a state rep, and he was the lead detective on the cult murders in Fall River, Carl Drew. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, he was very frustrated by his experience working with Pina because um, yeah. Pina lighted on... Well, P Pina wanted to go after Carl Drew as the mastermind, and and he felt that that was part of the story, but not the whole story. And this is around the time right after Manson, and this is you know he wanted his Charles Manson cult murder guy in jail, and it was going to be a big story. So there's all this political overtones to why yeah. he focused in and narrowed his view on this getting this one guy when there was one person who participated in all three murders yeah. and it wasn't Carl Drew so mm. well the uh, he was Ron Pina called a grand jury on uh, um, was it Ponce he called the grand jury mm -hmm. on Ponce and the police were telling him at least in the other the other sequence was that uh, you know he, you don't have him no. Okay. No. He didn't well, have it, he, never he was got, just so bent on. Never was convicted. Yeah. So what happens is they get caught. Well, they had that friction with uh, living next to his mother. I think mm -hmm. Pina's mother lived next door to Pont. And yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. I think that was part of it. That was. Well, part we're of talking it. about Robin Murphy in the Colt murders. Yeah. And she's a piece of work. She was participated in all three murders, and uh, she, according to Sylvia and Alan, she is the evil one. Yeah. She's the one that was pretty much... Sacrificed somebody at the Freetown Park? Well, the first body was found at Diamond under the stands. Mm -hmm. um, she was beat up, hands tied behind her back, um, murdered. Um, the second body was found in the... Uh, Out at Ari Smith, right? Ari Smith, uh, off Jefferson the Street. Street. Ari Smith, yeah. what the, the yeah. She claimed the other guy, the, the guy had done it, um, Maltus. Maltus. But... 
she sat in the car and turned up the radio so she wouldn't hear it. But knowing her story, she was much more a participant than that. And then she definitely participated in the third murder of um, Robin Robin Murphy. Yeah. No, is that no, right? she, no, she Robin is Robin Murphy, Murphy she, no. of uh, Karen Marston. And that was the one that um, Carl Drew participated in as well, where they found her in the in the um, in the woods in Westport. Um, that's a horrific killing, horrific killing, and it stopped after that. But um, she had actually pled guilty to the first murder. Robin Murphy had pled guilty to the first murder, but did a plea to testify against Carl Drew, and and then got immunity on the first murder. I mean, she literally killed a woman but got immunity on it so it's an unsolved case in order to turn evidence on Carl Drew. That's how much pain there was after Carl Drew. So he let her not be so convicted he let her of, off. He of her, that murder. Of that murder. She was a paroled for something like nine years yeah. during a period of time which she was caught violating her parole that, and that, got sent that back. That story never ends even today. He well, claims uh, he's innocent. He's got a Facebook page he has a, uh, a a Twitter account. He has got a uh, a website claiming his innocence, mm. and he contacted the Innocence Project, and they said, "Oh, we're way too busy. We don't have, we can't take your case." As two authors, you have an audience out there that reads your book, has pieces that you haven't got. They yes. Oh, sure. Of. Oh, absolutely. They know of. Oh, yeah. And that's oh, yeah. what you reached. I think you did, Stephanie. You reached out for both of you did, but. I'm trying to get people who had any information yep, yep. over and above the library, the police department, the decision of the courts, over and above that for something else that could tie it up and finish or open up a cold case. And Robin Murphy was up for parole again just last year. And the parole board heard her and then their ruling was, we don't believe a single thing you say out of your mouth. You are n g never going to get out of jail if we can help it. So she's still in. She's in prison. But she was out for nine years after killing three people. She was out for nine years on the deal. Because of the deal that she cut with Kenneth. Hmm. That's the problem. The politics got involved with both of those major cases: the the uh, prostitute killings and the uh, and right. the cult murders. You know, in in, in I get. It's so intriguing that I get to uh, go back and forth myself in reading this. And it, when you in the heading of chapter two, 1980 to 1989, the slayings intensify. Yes. So that what happens is I don't know who was it uh, was it uh, Eddie Harrington that concluded this one? Was he part of this statement that was made uh, after the South Coast yeah. experience of property reduction? Because. Of all of the things you've been about the muters, it, it brings into categories of drugs. Yeah. Yes. It brings big drugs. It also brings the fact that in New Bedford or close, close proximity are seaports. Seaports bring in people on voyages, working merchant marines, merchant seamen, and I think they've participated, not in every case, but in some of the cases. Well, when you read the parole records of people asking for parole, and those documents are online. So you read the parole statements and you read the person's life, because they tell a really sad story about them growing up. It's all the same story. They have the same exact story. It's all about a kid who was not supervised as a child, who either came from a broken home or nobody paid attention to the person. They went out and hung out with the wrong people they got involved in drugs and alcohol. They, um, not necessarily a gang, but just a couple of friends. They would, and then they'd turn violent and because they were out of their minds, according to them. They would rob somebody, but go too far and kill them. Yeah. They would beat somebody up outside of a bar and kill them. And they all had the same Emma. drug, young drug story, yeah. the addiction story. And it was, um, it kept being repeated to me as I was reading these stories, and it, it's sad. It's no excuse, but it, 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 this is the drug era, and I think that's why so many crimes occurred. The 1970s and 1990s were the busiest time decades for murders in the South Coast. 1970s and 90s. 70s and 90s. And it's because of drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's still it's still happening today because of drugs, but it hasn't been as uh, 
as frequent in the past 20, uh, 18, yeah, 20 kind of years. Like it's a dead ending a lot of stories on that. You know, there is that book component that's being left out in a lot of cases, whereas it would be wilder than it is. It's a different kind of drug right now. Now the opioid epidemic is people doing it to themselves instead of people yeah. being on the opioids and then go committing a crime mm -hmm. because of it. Heroin's the crime that you know causes people to go want more, 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 yeah. more, and then yeah. they go and they rob. Chief Racine told me that 90% of the crime in Fall River is drug related, meaning people robbing, beating up people, uh, murdering people for money to buy drugs, and so it's all linked to the drug system. In the book, throughout what chapter in the book, there are different people who have really mafia, mafia, mafiosa tendencies or partnerships or whatever the case may be. The way that it, it seems that you, from the files, the way you handle it, that's always a cold case. Never gets no, that, you're right. He's got a story never about gets that. solved. You are absolutely right. There's, I'm not too sure they want to solve it. That's right. I'm not sure either. It would you open know, up a can of worms, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. R Ruskell. That's it. That's uh, it. Ruskell. Right. From the Rus first book. Yeah. Yep. Ruskell in the first book. Uh, they never solved that case. Uh, um, Madeiras, Joe Madeiras, yep. who was shot in the back of the head in his in his van at Cook yep. Pond. Uh, they never solved that case. How about the mafia guy here in Somerset? Which one? He's I have to say book. which one. <laughs> he's in the book. Um, he's in the first book or is in the second book? He was, he was killed. Romando? Yes, Romando. He wrote the oh. book. He uh, out. He became a snitch for yeah, the. Yeah. yeah. But then he ended up dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, now that definitely is a is a organized crime. Deal. No, actually, there's thoughts it that it wasn't. It I'm had to do because the. The I girlfriend, don't know about that. his girlfriend was in the bedroom during she, the whole She the, was under the bed or something. She was, she was. His girlfriend was in the house when he was killed, and she heard the conversation. And she didn't want to say anything because it was her brother. Yeah, yeah. She, she was okay. the sister of one of the guys. One of the guys the that committed the murder, so she, so she never went, said anything until years and years and years later. And then he'd get out from underneath the bed and sit here. <laughs> no, so it definitely, so it's apparent that that wasn't. Uh, a mafia hit, although it it had all the earmarks of it because he was a snitch for the feds. So oh yeah, he wrote a book about Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. The uh, when the, the the demise of Joe Savage, Jeff Savage. No, he's not in here. You don't have him yet. Joe Savage. Don't have him any because he wasn't killed in Fall River. Oh, he was killed in New Hampshire. Well, in Vermont. Uh, yeah, in Vermont. Maine. Uh, in Maine, Maine I Vermont. think. But they never proved anything on Joe Savage either. Oh no, no. I, uh, I, at one time... I, Joe Savage was very friendly with uh, Amy LaFrance, you know. Yes, from, I know. From White's restaurant. <laughs> he used to yeah, take he, care of Amy. We, in, in the citizenship times we were doing, we were kind of open for that. You can understand that. Every Saturday morning, you don't need an appointment, you just get in line, yeah. and we go through to set you up to have an interview. We were doing that for years, right? So we bought, we had a lot of guys who maybe on a run came with them. We, you know, we were, sure. we, we were in a detective agency. We didn't know that. And, and so I got friends, I knew Joe Savage. Joker and Duke Remmer's first name was Edgar, because I went to Sacred Heart School with him. And, uh, and when you look at the girls alone, um, I'm fascinated by your book. Well, that's because this is an era when people are still alive. The yeah. first book is much older, yes. and people forget or are no longer alive that were connected to that. But you said you know a lot of these people. That are in this book, I do. so that's I do. that's the audience is going to recognize names there. Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's not so much the, of the thing with the citizenship, but it's just the fact is we were housed down in North End, and you know the, that the Republican Club was a hangout for you, you, you know what, right for the longest time. So uh, we all, and you know I would always get a call. They shit, they they gambling on a Sunday, always on a Sunday, of course, and then somebody shuts them down. And they, who do they come to me? You know, so you gotta answer to that. And the guy kind of cut down a telephone pole. You know, I mean, you know, she's, I mean, so these stories are real. I live them. Sure. Uh, so whenever you see a murder that's cold, cold, and everybody's trying to get away from calling it a gangland thing, it's, you have to come back and look at that for how much time you want to spend on it. You can't get your hands on the cases if they're cold because it means they're open. 
and when an open case is considered uh, off limits to anybody to look at. Right. So if the case is solved, then you can get your hands on some things, yeah. but not but, the other way around. But the, but there's so so much of that put on the back burner so you can't look at it again. Well, it's interesting. Right now, there's uh, online, which mm -hmm. is amazing. There's there are people who spend their time doing armchair detective work on cold cases, and yep. they're actually solving cases. Mm -hmm. They're actually, they're in fresh eyes taking a look at evidence and things like that, and they're actually solving some of these wor in nationwide yeah. cold um, cases. Let me ask you something, Stephanie, John. Do people contact you about somebody in the book? Sometimes. Book? Sometimes. What, what do you mean contact? Well, somebody reads your book, Yeah. and they know who was murdered, who was accused, where it happened. Yeah, we had a missing? lady called us about the first book. We had an address wrong yeah. on the house that it happened in, so we corrected it. Was it she knew it's, it was It's more person. likely that they will come to one of our speaking presentations right. that we do at libraries and different places, and then they will ask us these questions. Where did we get this information? Oh, yeah. And that, did, yeah. That, yeah. More so than calling us directly. Yeah. Which is fine with me. I, you know, I'd rather yeah, do it I, that yeah. way than have people call me. But. Some of these people are still alive. Okay, yeah. some of these murderers are out yeah, because they've gotten parole, and they still live in the area, and they've committed other crimes. And I'm very careful not to mention that because I they're still around. No, you can't. And I well, no, I don't want to. I don't want to get visitors. mad at me. No, you want to get we don't want visitors in the middle I'm of the night. I'm just talking about one case, and I'm not going to bring up all the other stuff that they did because I really don't need that. They live near my house kind of thing, so i got to be careful. Joe Savage, I was going down to the beach, uh, the north end of Fort Lake Beach, with my late wife, and we're driving. He draws me, Tommy, Tommy, you want to buy it? So I'm like, no, nah, it's okay, Joe. So he said to me, come on out on the boat. I said, the last bit one on the boat never came never back. Never came back, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> So anyway, but uh, no, we didn't write up Joe. No, no, either alive or dead. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, true. It's out of the cases. I, I mean, we had a hundred and like a hundred and seventy-seven yep. uh, uh, cases in this book, but number two, what? and that's a lot. And then uh, book number one had we thought that was going to be a lot, but it turned out to be nothing compared to this book number two, and we, and yeah. we had to stop at nineteen ninety-nine. Sure. And uh, consider doing book number three, which, uh, you know, when when I did the research, I did it from beginning to end. So I did the research right, right. through 2016. So you could add to it. And so it would have been the book would have been way too big. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't. It would have been too. So. To your credit, both of you, the book is placed in a, in a way in which it raises the curiosity of of of, of the reader, non-reader. Because it's like a thing; it's like a spread. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody who read it, will or pick, figured something in it, passes it on to someone else, and that's uh, that's. And there's sources important. you can go find some more information in every chapter. Yeah. Where you could read more about it, like the Shallow Graves book that just came out, yeah. which is on the uh, the uh, New Bedford Highway murders. Yeah, I know that. Excellent book. Yeah. Excellent book. So there's other things that people can go. The thing about read more the about. thing about that is you in your book though. See, your book is a mixture of, of uh, guilty, not guilty, yeah. mm -hmm. accused, not accused. Unsolved, in the case of, solved, unsolved, yeah. unsolved, and solved. In Shallow Graves, that book is a, is about or the highway focuses on the highway killings, yeah. and focuses on the politics of the highway killings. Yes. Um, and which, the families of the women. Uh, and the who families were of the victims and so on. So. Yeah. Uh, that's a b book that you have to be interested in, in either the victim or the accused or whoever it may be or no or location. That's so, the biggest unsolved but, serial killing in New England. Please? The, that's the biggest unsolved serial killing in New England. In New England, well. All of New well. England. And See, they, we're giving the reader just a sample. Yes. I know. Of, of everything. And then the, the reader wants to explore more, they can. So, uh, I mean, we, you know... We, we, we wrote this thing about Patricia Murphy. Do you remember Patricia Murphy? Her husband was a cop. And uh, he set her, he had killed her, and then he set her up as if it was a hit and run down on Bay yeah, Street. Yeah, she was yeah, running. I read that. And, uh, I mean, he served his time, and then, you know, he's come, come out of jail. I don't know, he's not a cop anymore. I don't know if he lives in Fall River or not, but I, I'm not interested in meeting the guy. No, no, no. You know? 
uh, Pemberton, the boxer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he, it, uh, well, I must have seen him a long time. Uh, Pem he, when you're reading that story, and the fact is that they, they burnt him in his coffin. In the, in the funeral home, they torched him. Man, I mean, just, I mean, the guy's already dead, but somebody yeah. really hated the guy's oh, guts. Good, I, guess. I, I had one conversation with his son, who was since, uh, when he worked at, I think it was Kmart, he was in charge of, uh, 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 in, in the human resources department. He wouldn't talk about his father, so I didn't put anything in the no, book. Of course. And uh, he recently was in this area to do some kind of presentation, uh, but the, the guy, Poor guy had, was the son of a, you know. And, and how do you how do you talk about your father who was torched in the funeral home? You know, but the to your credit, both of you. I mean, you 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 reached into the darkness, if you will, about all of these things that have happened, and people want to know about them. And the uh, it's like an appetite, which like you, you, yeah. get, you get in one bite, and you get it, you can't put it down. Yeah. That's how I feel but about it. I yeah. I, I, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank both of you for your talent, and to share it with the reader, because you know this is a good one. You got to get another one. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and uh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. The um, if you haven't read Meredith's Manslaughter and Mayhem on the South Coast, Volume Two with John P. Cummings, of course, and his assistant, Stephanie Corey, do so. It's available in many, many places. Uh, and it also, you also become, they become a conduit for wanting to know a lot more about it, about other ones as well. So this thing goes on, it's almost like Cecil B. DeMille's with a picture, you just keep going on. Yeah. Because it's not you, it's them. And if we yeah. left something out, contact us through the yeah, email in the know. book. Let I us know. That. I saw that. That's very good. So, get up off the couch. Get out of the chair. <laughs> go out and get this book. You'll enjoy it very, very much. And you're going to know, unfortunately, some of the people in it. Yeah. Both the good side and the bad side. So, from the Somerset Public Library, SATV, thanks, John Cummings and Stephanie Coy. Thank, Thank you, you. Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you.